Hey guys, so um, today is Thursday, December 28th, and we just got back from dinner with our realtor. We ended up purchasing a home, and it's all been like up in the air. Obviously, like we started building a home in Katy, Texas um, on a lake and we were able to pick out designs and things for it and it was awesome and we were actually really looking forward to it but it just kept getting pushed off and pushed off and it was so frustrating um like even to this day it's still not completed and we signed documents in february and um it's still not done so we came up to um, Lake Conroe, which we didn't even know was here. And we fell in love with it up here because of the scenery, the lake, the... I mean, it reminds me of more like Colorado and a little bit, a little bit like Oregon, um, but way better. Actually, probably the most part is this reminds me more of Tennessee, where Grandma... Um, where I had visited, um, it, it reminds me more of, um, <sighs> Hadith Grandma? Anyways, when we were up in Tennessee and we were visiting there, we loved it. And it, the, all the lime green colors of the grass and the trees and the hills, the rolling hills. Well, that is very similar here in um, Lake Conroe. And anyways, we started looking at houses and we actually went through a bunch of different houses. Let me see if I can pop my phone here. There we go. It's kind of been, there we go. Um, so we've been looking at a lot of different houses. Um, our realtor who actually doesn't live in Kitty, Texas, he doesn't live up here in Lake Conroe either. So he's been driving up here and showing us, sometimes we'll go through, oops, sometimes we'll go through eight or 10 houses in a weekend and let me see if I can pop this phone here. Yeah, there we go. So sometimes we'll go through eight or, or 10 houses in a weekend and we didn't, we weren't falling in love with any house. Um, they were beautiful homes, um, but we just didn't, I don't know, we didn't connect with the neighborhoods or the home or whatever the thing was. And then I saw on one of the websites, this home that we ended up buying, I saw it on there probably seven weeks ago, a couple months ago. And I was like, I really want to walk through this home. Well, to make a long story a little bit shorter it actually went under contract with somebody else. So someone else made an offer on the home and the seller took the offer. And I remember thinking, darn it, I wanted to see that home. I wanted to go through it. It had a, a view of a pond. It had it in a park setting. It was a, a beautiful home and 3,000 square feet. It had four bedrooms and, um, and had a view of a pond. And it was in a gated community on a golf course, um, on a lake, um, like all these things. And I remember thinking, darn it, I wish we could have walked through it. We probably would have made an offer. Well, I decided to, to ask, actually, I think I called the realtor's office who had the home listed to see like, hey, what's going on with his home? And you know, is it under contract? Because it, it said option period, and I didn't know what that meant. And so I called the, the realtor, the listing agent, and they went through the whole thing and said, well, actually, the, it's under an option period. The buyer is trying to sell their home, and if they sell their home within the option period, then they can move forward with purchasing this home. But we, we just listed the home for them. So immediately I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a possibility. I want to see this home. And we were able to get into the home. I think this was around Thanksgiving. We were able to get into the home shortly after Thanksgiving. We did a walkthrough of it and we loved it. And so then we decided to make an offer. 
we it all ended up going working out the seller took our our deal the other deal fell through anyway so they took our offer over the other offer and then we offered like a three-week close so saying okay we're gonna buy this home you guys will have your money in hand in three weeks um, but it didn't close in three weeks we had all these issues with the the seller didn't let people come in to do an appraisal of the home so that like slowed things up the seller was actually being very difficult with trying to get people to do inspections and do appraisals on the home. So it slowed it down and it pushed our closing out actually exactly a week. We were supposed to close a week ago. And then we started thinking, okay, maybe this isn't the Lord's will. Maybe this isn't the home that the Lord wants us to buy right now. So then we just went to the Lord and just kept praying, God, like close this door if it's not supposed to happen. We trust you, Lord, just close the door so it cannot happen. And that has been our prayer. Like, open the doors that are supposed to be open and close the doors that are not supposed to be opened. And it actually says in Isaiah 22, 22, that the Lord will give the keys to, and it was actually King David, I believe. Or no, it wouldn't have been David because it was in Isaiah. But he spoke, although I think he did it again in the Psalms, but he said, the Lord will give um, the keys to man that no one can close and close the doors that no one can open. Basically meaning that it is, if it's a, the Lord's will, then nobody can stop it. If God orchestrates the steps of man and man obeys or man comes into agreement with God, nothing can stop that. And... Um, and that's what we've been praying. God, close the door. If we're not supposed to be buying this home, if we're supposed to be somewhere else, like, give us that discernment. And um, then the interest rates dropped significantly. They took a nosedive last week. And all of a sudden, we're like, okay, hold on here. We want to take advantage of the interest rates. We know, like, God is in everything, right? Like, if we really truly look at our life and our circumstances we can see god working in the midst of it or we can choose to look aside and say no it's not god it's just happenstance oh it's just good it's just good luck well no everything good comes from god right everything good and it can appear um, like it came from god in some situations because the devil can appear as an angel of light right so we have to be discerning of it. But if we're constantly praying, God, let your will be done in whatever situation it is here on earth as it is in heaven. Basically saying, just like he said, say in uh, the Lord's Prayer. Um, so we're praying for the Lord's will, not my will, not what we desire, not what we want. This home's beautiful. It's in a gated community. In fact, the gated community is 24-7 of an armed security guard. Um, it's very safe. It's in a wonderful community. And that's like our flesh wants that, but maybe it's not the Lord's will. Maybe he has another plan. And so we've been praying that. So when the interest rates dropped last week, I was like, okay, I think this is all a part of God's plan. It like significantly changed everything um, a lot. And like today at closing, it saved us like five, just over $5,000. And, but we were also like, okay, God, maybe you want us to wait a little bit longer. Um, anyways, everything actually ended up working out. We were able to close today. Like I said, we saved over $5,000 on this home because of the interest rates. Now, if we would have closed like we were supposed to a week ago, um, then that wouldn't have happened, right? If we would have bought the home in Katy, Texas, that wouldn't have happened either. In fact, we wouldn't have bought it yet. We'd still be renting. And we're still in our condo, and we'll be here for a little bit until we move everything over. Um, but yeah, we're excited. I was kind of hoping I was gonna record this video over there tonight. 
we took our realtor to dinner and then we just decided to come back to the condo um i didn't get very much work done today so i need to um, dive back into my opening brief um and just i'm so grateful i am so blessed i am so beyond blessed um but the thing i'm missing is you guys i'm missing my kids I'm missing Warren and Clara in my life. I'm missing my older son, Wyatt, in my life. I'm missing... I'm missing some very, very important things that should be in my life that the enemy has stolen. And the thing that gives me peace and that I get excited about is the enemy is required to give back what he has stolen, but not just give back what he stole sevenfold. That means he has to, the recompense, which is not only getting back what he took, but the recompense, meaning like all, everything that was lost as in time, finances, emotions, um, well-being, like all the things that you can only imagine that we have lost, um, that anyone could imagine in this situation where you've been separated from your family. You know, if you're a mother and you're separated from your children for years, well, the enemy's going to owe big time, right? He's going to owe big time. And God isn't going to, well, he's going to be careful with what he gives to people, right? Like he sees, what do you do with the little? So that way when he gives you the big, are you going to be a steward of it? Are you going to be faithful of it? And um, even if it's just spiritual things, right? Even if it's not even financial. If it's just purely spiritual things, which is wisdom and revelation, um, authority spiritually, identity spiritually of who we are as a child of God. When God, um, like... I guess you could say, like, expands that um, and expands a revelation to what it is that we already began to have. Like, that could be powerful. And it could be powerful in the enemy's camp as well. And so God is very cautious, and he's also very, um, well, he's wise, right? Like, he knows our hearts. He searches our hearts. Jesus it says in scripture, I think in Timothy, he script, he searches our hearts for those things. And in Psalms, King David actually asked the Lord, search my heart. If there's anything inside me that is not of you, Lord, show it to me and take it from me. I don't want it to be a part of me. And that's where I have been for a very long time. And I will continue to stay there until my last breath. God, if there's anything in me that's not of you, I want you to send it through the fire get rid of it I want to be so pure I want to be the spotless bride I want to be purified and this last three and a half years have been a massive purification and sanctification process of my heart my mind my soul and spirit is trusting God like how could you well God's pretty amazing and uh, I'm pretty sure he can handle this and since I was made in his image, he is in me and I am in him. I can carry it as well and I can handle it. Um, but not by my strength, not by my might, not by my will, not by my power, but of the Lord's. And I really encourage you guys, Warren and Claire, if you're watching this, that God will do what he said he will do. Period. That's what the word of God says and he's not a liar. He's not man. He's not even... He can't lie. There's nothing in him that can lie and make up stories or falsify anything. So everything that the Bible says, it's true. And what he says about us, it's true. God loves us so much. So, let's see here. I'm at 14 and a half minutes, so I should probably end this video um, I just wanted to share with you what had happened today and tomorrow or whenever it is that we get back over to the house. Um, we'll give you guys a tour of the house. Um, I do want to paint the inside. Right now it's all one color. It's like a really light cream. It's almost like a white. So 
I do want to paint it. Um, and then, of course, we need to get furniture for it. So, anyways, I love you guys so much. I miss you. I hope that you guys are able to enjoy your Christmas break. Um, I miss you guys so, so much. So much. Um, but Father God, I just pray for a warning, Clara, Lord. I thank you for who they are. I thank you for trusting me to be their mom. Lord, I pray for everyone in this situation, Lord. Everyone who has been affected and everyone who will be affected. Everyone who has heard about us, who has heard my name or warning Clara's name, or even the Scott family, Lord. I pray for that. I pray for each person involved. Lord, I pray for the grace, the empowerment of the grace of God upon our lives, Lord. I pray that everything that is in the darkness will come into the light. Lord, I thank you that nothing will be hidden, that it will all be exposed. I thank you for the light of King Jesus that is being shown upon everything. That people are able, and I pray that the veil deception, Lord, even upon my eyes, the veil deception upon everyone else's lives in this situation that that veil deception will be removed and that we'll be able to see what the clear um, capacity with the eyes of our heart and with our mind our soul and our spirit the truth of everything that is around us lord and I thank you for the fear of the Lord that brings us to a place of conviction, a place of, a place of humility, but also a place of empowerment of your grace and the safety and the security, Father, that you give us through the fear of the Lord, through King Jesus. I just thank you for warning, Clara. I thank you you're blessing them. I thank you for shining your favor upon them, um, for them having revelations that are beyond logic, beyond our mind. I just thank you for blessing them, Father, in your name. Amen. I love you guys so much. I miss you. I love you. I'm going to give you a hug. I love you guys. I miss you so much. God bless you. I'll be praying for you as I always am. All right. I love you guys. Bye.